Sherry and Pesquale are pastors who founded Bread of Life in 2013. They transformed their own basement into a vital food pantry that feeds thousands. And it's about food, but it's about more than that because the people whom we serve, they need to know that their lives matter, that somebody cares. To have George come and help us get more food storage, it's just gonna be life-changing. We'll be able to help so many people who are in need. I have my own space. Wow. You got your own space, yeah. You deserve it after all these years. We never expected so many people to come alongside us and say, hey, we can help. And so to have that, especially now, makes it more meaningful. And it gives you hope. This is George the Rescue. Sherry and Pesquale are pastors who founded Bread of Life in 2013. Now their own journey first began when they themselves donated food to a nearby pantry and were very alarmed to see the widespread need in their local community of Westchester, New York. But instead of standing idly by, they transformed their own basement into a vital food pantry that feeds thousands. Food rescue for us is leaving 6 a.m. in the morning and going to different grocery stores and rescuing food. And from that point, we give it to families, to shelters, soup kitchens, pantries. If someone's hungry, we'll get food to them. My husband started building a pantry in our basement with the help actually of our two sons. And we didn't know what would happen. And I would question myself early on. And I would ask the Lord, why am I here? you know, taking care of them. And one day, a little old lady came out with a little walker. She can barely lift up her head, and she looked up at me and said, you're saving my life. And that touched me so deeply, and I knew where we were, we should be. And now we feed thousands, and it's about food, but it's about more than that, because the people whom we serve, they need to know that their lives matter, that somebody cares. And I think that our volunteers are transformed. I've been volunteering with Bread of Life since seventh grade. I'm most proud to be a part of this because I get to see the faces of the hunger that we're helping and I see it in their faces, the difference that they're making every single day. And just how I'm able to be a part of that has really kind of shaped who I am. I just love helping other people and it gives me joy and everybody that's here feels the same way. Bread of Life is, it's filled with, with love and sense of belonging. But I have volunteered at a lot of different food pantries over the years. And this is just very, very different. It's a family, because you are coming into a family's home. Running a food pantry from your house in the middle of a pandemic is quite challenging. It's like a river of food. Food coming in, food going out. Then you have the volunteers, right, of all different ages. So you have little kids, you have high school kids, middle school kids, you have grandma. The house is 1885, so you can get an idea that the basement is not ideal for a food pantry. It's definitely dark. It's not really organized. It's not really a good flow that we would love to have down there. Well, if George to the rescue could come and help us with our basement, it would be amazing. We can feed more people. It can be more efficient for our volunteers. If George to the Rescue is able to come and help renovate our pantry, it'd mean the world to everyone who volunteers here. Every other Monday, Bread of Life hosts Pantry Days, where volunteers come together and pack bags full of food for people who arrive in need. I could not think of a better day to surprise these heroes with the news of a basement rescue. I have some string beans too, Rachel. It's incredible. Imagine all this stuff would go in the garbage. Hey, this is the place. I heard about what you guys do and just all the people that you provide for. So uh, in my nature of rescue, and we want to come and rescue the basement for you. Well, so. welcome, George. Uh -huh. Amazing, George showed up here. I can't believe that he's here. These guys work so hard and to have somebody do something for them that makes their lives and makes their job easier is an enormous benefit. To have George come and help us get more food storage, it's just gonna be life changing. We'll be able to help so many people who are in need. I'll just sanitize and then, uh, <laughs> and then don't worry, I'm vaxxed, double vaxxed. <laughs> Thank you.
is all about making Bread of Life more efficient and adding some color and some organization to this basement. So I have our contractor and designer, Sarah and Damien, meeting me here, and we're gonna figure out how we can maximize the space. All right, Damien, Sarah, we are ready for action. Yeah, we have a lot of plans going on down here. You have a lot of work to do. Thank you very much. We are gonna clean it up quite a bit, add some more shelving. We came into this project super excited about it, honestly. When we first walked in the space, it was a little bit overwhelming because there was stuff everywhere. The space itself was not maximized on the vertical aspect of it. So walking around, we had stuff on the floor. The zones were so separated that it didn't make sense for the flow. We are all about efficiency and making it easier for these people here. What's going on right here? We're gonna knock out that wall. This is not original to the house, this wall. So this is a non-load bearing wall. We're gonna take out from the window over and get rid of all that concrete between. So if I kick this down right now, it wouldn't be a problem. Yes. It's gonna take a little bit more than that. It Maybe is. let me get the sledgehammer and do it from the other side. You might wanna do that. Yeah. All right. We're gonna knock out that wall. So off into the back of the pantry, there's this area that's kind of dark and a little bit creepy. I had an idea that this could be the hangout spot. This could be where the table is. They could sit in a coffee bar, bring in some color, bring in some lighting, and really just bring some life into this space. I busted this thing out of retirement, I want you to know. Glasses, ear protection. Always. We have our game plan, and not a lot of demo, but the demo we have to do is significant in the fact that it is two concrete panels that were built probably over 100 years ago. Only way to take these down is with a sledgehammer. All right, I loosened it up. I want, you, I want you to get some money shots in there. Seriously? Ah, oh, this thing's heavy. The secret to swinging the sledge is you let the sledge do the work. The power is within the sledge, which means you don't have to grip it like a baseball bat. Let it slip. Yeah! Sarah is doing amazing. She is smashing the cement. I can tell she needed this. You know, this is a great stress reliever. I love demo. Demo is my favorite thing, but obviously a sledgehammer. I like to nail guns, anything with power tools. I love power tools. <laughs> you want to take it right now? <laughs> All right, hand it off, hand it off, hand it off. We're done. That, and that wall is done, huh? That's it. Look at this, progress. Yep. George. Yeah. You weren't supposed to take that one down. Oh, snikey! I am feeling inspired by having that wall down because now I can visualize the space nice and open and I could see people using the space. All these pipes in the ceiling, they can't just disappear, but we're gonna do our best to make them disappear by painting them all the same color. This is a little rusty. We're actually going to sand it down. I'm about to use the 3M sanding sponge. What's cool about this diamond channeling right here is that as you sand, instead of the dust billowing up, it all comes into these channels and then it drops in one place, one nice little neat little pile. See this crack up here on this pipe? Did you guys crack the pipe? No, that, we didn't crack the pipe. Oh, wow. Is it all the way through? Um, Oh, it's always something, isn't it? It's always something. And this is the waste pipe. This is the this is the pipe you do not want to crack in. Yeah, that pipe was shot. That's all the way through. To that, to that, to this, to this hub, to there. That's all the way through. There is water through waste here. water coming through here. Okay. Let's just say if it got any worse, we'd be flooding the basement. I could say in 22 years, I've never seen a cracked cast iron pipe like that. So with this being cracked, it's you're leaking methane gases into this basement, which obviously permeate throughout the house. But think about this. We have all this food down here. You don't want that. We're just going to remove the entire piece and replace it with a new pipe. How heavy is this thing going to be? Uh, we're going to probably about 200 pounds. Oh, nice. So just put me under it and then you guys snap it. The only time I've seen that is in like some medieval dungeon. That is a uh, torture device. It is pantry. Oh yeah, there it goes. You know, you got it. Not potable water. Do not drink that. Are we ready? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's the stuff I was hoping not to get on me. All right, there we are. Even though we're coming in to organize the food pantry, what we're really doing is rescuing the whole operation. Because this pipe goes, everything's out of business.
So this area right here, this is for all of the volunteers. This is their little nook, their little sanctuary. Where, their lounge. You know, uh, so I'm thinking up here, like where the plaster meets the beam, maybe instead of like fixing that hole with plaster, we use Bondo. Excellent, I think it's a great idea. That Bondo is gonna work great for that. Really quick to work with. Three or four minutes, get that thing all patched up. 15 minutes, it dries, come back, give it a sand. It never happened. Pantry day, still happening. Even though we're working on the basement, they, uh, people need food on the table, so they keep on doing what they're doing. Damien, Sarah, you ready? Catch, this one's for you. you said you were worried about working off that macaroon. I think we got it, Damien. This is all coming together. So this is for all the, the, the deliveries, Receiving. loading. Receiving, we'll have another cart here. And then we'll have shelves here, here, and then down here as well? Yes. All right, feeling it. I know this is very raw right now, but we gotta remember, this is a basement. We are painting all of this to really warm it up. So we're gonna keep this blue, but everything else is gonna get painted white, so we're just gonna Use some of this scotch rough surface. This is the perfect application. So the construction has been done, everything has been cleaned up and painted, and now is the time to bring in the fun stuff. Furniture making 101. <laughs> Today we are building a custom dining bench for the break room. Part of the bench design is upholstery. So George and I are gonna upholster the back and the seat. If you really want to do this at home, you're going to need some supplies. You'll need birch plywood, foam, then we did a batting and then fabric. And you can choose any type of fabric you want. A DIY and hands-on projects, they're really where I have the most fun. I don't get to do it a lot with my residential projects. So for this one, I'm like, it's a basement. I'm gonna go a little crazy. As many things as I can make, I'm gonna do it. What we wanna do is we wanna pull it tight, then we wrap our corner. Watch your fingers. Ah! <laughs> you need help, bro. This filtrate smart room air purifier monitors and filters the air you breathe. So this is gonna be great for all the volunteers, everybody down here in the Bread of Life pantry, basement. They know that with all the good they're doing, we're doing a little good for their lungs as well. And let's hit the bar. The space came out phenomenal. We're super happy with all the colors that Sarah chose, with the layout, with the flow, with our different areas. They're really gonna be able to have less back-breaking work, less bending down, pack more easily. This place is perfect. The only thing we're missing is food. We need to stock these shelves, and I have an idea. some food so we can help fill their shelves? Yeah! So when we heard that George to the Rescue needed us to stock the shelves, I knew that Milton School would be the best place to go for it. They have huge community spirit. Their theme is the Lions Give Back. Everyone here is so excited because giving back is awesome and also George to the Rescue is awesome. I was very excited to meet George because I watched some of his videos and he's really a great lightsaber for those people. I think we were really excited because I like to give back and I think you do too. Yeah. I hope everybody does. Let's load up the Chevy! Thank you. Oh my God, that is humongous. Wow, huh? Is this crazy? Oh my gosh. I know, it's been amazing. This 
This is unbelievable. When you said to come to Milton School that you would get food for Bread of Life, I did not expect this. These guys are preaching what, what you and what Bread of Life and Pasquale and Sherry are all about. I had goosebumps when Stu called because Bread of Life is really everything for our community here. We scrambled, got the word out through all of the parents, all of our newsletter that's online. The kids were psyched. We had a poster making party. Everybody just really wanted to put as much food as we could into the pantry. We're definitely coming back for a second round. But as you can see, the kids here are definitely passionate about giving back. Woo! Yeah, Milton School! Today here at Milton School was absolutely amazing. I could not believe the turnout. I can't believe the amount of food. I can't believe the craziness. Not surprised at the crazy kids, but it was awesome. I guess the only thing left to do now is to transport all this food back and start stocking it on the shelves. We're gonna to have to call in some reinforcements on this one. Oh my this is amazing! Gosh. Wow! Holy cow! Look at these shelves where there was nothing. This is awesome. Wow! Oh my gosh! Oh my lord! What a difference! <laughs> Great job, guys. It's a blessing for sure. This morning, we were like, when are we gonna see the basement? We've been watching Damien and Sarah and George pulling stuff out, bringing stuff downstairs, and we're just like, wow, it's gonna look amazing. Sherry, Pasquale. George. The two busiest bees in all of Westchester County, maybe the world, you guys are unbelievable. So good to... Oh, it's good to, to be home. Well, oh. you guys want to uh, go and see what we did? Yes, yes, we do. All right, let's go. All right. We just never imagined we would get to this place where we would get help. So it's just really, really exciting. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Lord. Wow. Holy moly. Oh my gosh. Amazing. What a blessing. Oh. Walking in, I could see the flow changed going into the basement. Before it was just like walking into a big room. Now it seems like there was a plan in place, you know? That touched my heart. I noticed the colors right away because they're my favorite colors. They're everything. The logo is that color, our website. And it's clear that the whole team just spent a lot of time trying to say, well, what would mean something to us? So we did our own little Bread of Life food drive over at the Milton School, and the kids and the families went crazy with donations. Amazing. <laughs> and if you just bounce around this right here, you'll, uh, oh, you'll see the laundromat. Oh, new washing machines and dryers? Oh, my also. gosh. I have my own space. You got your own space, Sherry. You deserve it after all these years. What a difference. <laughs> what a difference, wow, beautiful. Great job, guys. It's a blessing for sure. I just have to be honest, I didn't expect to be overwhelmed by my basement. It's so emotional because of all the stuff we've been through and this past year was, was hard. We never expected so many people to come alongside us and say, hey, we can help. And so to have that, especially now, makes it more meaningful. And it gives you hope. Wow. We treasure our volunteers. This group, during COVID, they were with us through thick and thin. I had gotten sick from the virus. And these volunteers used their cars and they went and got the food to bring back to the, to the pantry so we could feed the people. Even as sick as I was, we yeah. still kept moving forward. That's true. This isn't just a place where the hungry come to be fed. This is where the community comes to serve. And I guess that part wasn't optimal. And now it's optimal. What George and Sarah and Damien did downstairs, it's gonna make our job easier now tremendously. George is amazing. He's got a good heart. We're going to miss George. That's what I'd like to say is we've, we've gotten to know him and he is so special. You know, when we started it, people were like, oh, this is 
that's nuts, you know, who would ever do this from their house? And I would say, well, how do you think the big nonprofits got started? Somebody had a passion, somebody had a mission. It had to start somewhere with someone. Look how far we've come. <laughs> this basement is going to help us feed more people, for sure. We think the future is going to be bright. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video.